Welcome, everyone. Um, so we started Allegro Graph um, around seven years ago. And because I had looked at IDF, um, I thought IDF is all about graph databases. So that's why we gave the name Allegro Graph. But then recently, we got these non-IDF graph databases coming up. And people would talk to us and say, hey, well, but you guys, you know, Allegro Graph is not really a graph database because it doesn't do property graphs. Well, I was a little bit confused that we had given our database the wrong name. But I, I decided to look a little bit closer. And then I actually discovered that we were already working with property graphs for many years. And so this is a, kind of a, a, a combination of two or three talks that I recently gave uh, about property graphs uh, in Allegro Graph. And I'll give you three examples of how we work with property graphs in Allegro Graph. First is in the fraud detection. And I've given this demo before, but I'll, I'll focus this time only about the property graph aspects. Um, then um, some people in the semantic community are looking at the phenomenon of bitemporality. And again, bitemporality can be solved in triple stores by using property graphs, or the fourth element of a triple. So I'm going to give a little bit of a demonstration uh, or talk about that. And then finally, um, we can also use the triple IDs of triples to uh, create property graphs. Yeah? And actually, we can then even show it in, uh, in graph. Um, I think it's fairly unique that we can have a graph where we have reification um, and, and property graphs uh, and, and show that in official display. So OK, let me start. So let me start with fraud detection. Yeah, so um, I gave this talk in San Jose at a NoSQL conference. So uh, I used an example where I said, say, OK, so now imagine you have a database with uh, all accounts of an online bank, and you have payments between accounts, and say you find you will try to find a circle of payments between accounts that all happened within 10 miles of San Jose within the last day and where the payment was more than $1,000. I mean, this is a real case that we work on. Now, um, for people who don't know what property graphs are, property graphs are um, a technique, well, a graph where both nodes and links can have properties. So if you look at this, you can see it says four parties that pay each other. Each of them of these nodes is an account with an email and account number, et cetera. What you really would want is also to say something about the page relationship. Yeah? So here comes the property graph element in, where you can say, well, this page relationship was about an amount of $2,000. Here was the that long where it happened, and this was the time when it happened. Yeah? So now, if you want to do queries where you use property graphs, and you try this in a normal graph database, um, then I can assure you it won't be particularly fast. So I actually invite you to try that for yourself. But we solved it in RDF, and it's pretty fast. So what do we do? Um, say we have a, a number of accounts yeah, um, that pay each other. Then how we represent this where that we say subject account A pays an account B. And then we use the fourth element of a triple to hang up other properties up. So in this case, you see G1. So here I could say that G1 happened at a particular time, had a particular level long when it happened, and a certain amount. Yeah? So now we implemented property graphs using the fourth element of the triple. And then we can use that in Sparkle. Yeah? So I can say, well, there's a, there was a payment from A to B. And as the fourth element, we used the pay one. And then from B to C, C to D, and D to A. Yeah? And so now we have a circle, but we also have the, um, the fourth element of each of these triples. And then we can do filters on this. We can look at the time. We can look at the location. And then ultimately, we can say whether something happened in a particular duration and within a particular time interval. I'm uh, sorry, and in a particular geospatial uh, uh, region. Yeah? So the full power of Sparkle and you can do everything you can do with a triple store. Um, so let me just give you a demo, a uh, quick demo of our data. So let me go here. 
and I think I know we have the money. So why doesn't it want to get bigger? Here it is. So let me um, open a database about fraud. Yeah, let me get a particular user that I know is in the database. So there's a person called Bruce.Rosi at Hitachi.com. Yeah. And if I click on this person, then I see the account for Bruce Rossi. So I see an account date time, an account IP address, account number. I see that this account was opened in a city called Gun Barrel City. So actually, if I click on this, you are in the Geo Names database where we have meta information about cities. So here you see um, that it was in Texas. You see there's about 5,000 people living there, um, latitude, longitude, etc., etc. And then um, what you see is we have a paid relationship. So we see that Bruce Rossi paid Clarence Berlin, yeah, um a particular amount. And you don't see the value, but actually what you see here on the right is the name of the graph in which things happened. So let me let me go to um, uh, so you see these numbers here, which are the fourth element of the triples. Now let's look at some of the payments. So here we see that Clarence uh, received is the receiver of a particular uh, transaction of two hundred and fifty four dollars. Now when you see my marks is on top of the dollar amount, but at the bottom we actually see the event that happened. So this is the meta information about this payment relationship. And when I go here, I see a certain amount, the time when it happened, where the payment happened, um, and who the sender was. Yeah. So we have amounts and we have payments between two accounts. So I can go back here and I can explore this graph on the screen by using sender, receiver and sender uh, relationships. So I could look through this, and I could look at this, and I could go forward, and let's just take a few interactions, and then at some point we'll have a circle that's filled up. And anyway, you can imagine that we have, so what you see here is that we have um, accounts, and these little ones are uh, the, the, the the transactions and we looked at the amounts of these transactions and then based on the amounts we gave them different types so you could have medium large payments or, or normal payments very small payments um, but it's kind of hard to see how money goes from one person to the other if you have a little object in between so if I go back then I can also um, go back to my predicates and say, I don't want to look at receiver and sender relationships. I just want to look at the payment relationships between them. So when I do this, now when I look at this, I can and I look at this. And then I got a little bit of a weird example here. But now I look at the graph just by the paid relationships. But the payments um, are just all one color. So one of the things I even did is when I go back again, I said, I don't want to look at these paid relationships. I even could take these predicates and and give the special types. Yeah. And now when I look at it, I see the different colors for the payment. And I could keep going and find the relationships between those. And again, it's not very important that I go into this here. But I hope that you see how I can use the fourth element of the graph yeah, to say things about a particular relationship. So this was my first demo.